way we get here. See, and as Jesus passed by, he was running when he passed by. Yeah, yeah. He was moving. Yeah. He was hiding so they wouldn't stone him to death. And as Jesus passed yeah. by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. How did he know this man was blind from his birth? He was he, he all this other activity behind him at the temple. They mad at him. They want to get him. They want to stone him. They want to corner him. They want to kill him. But as he passed him by, he discovered a man born blind. God is, is so powerful in his wisdom and his knowledge. And, and, and as I get into it, you're going to find out that it was a reason that he picked up on this man. It was a reason that he was able to discover this man born blind. It was a reason that he made this part of the story here yeah. of, 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 in order for us to increase in our belief. Yeah. Um, as he was running, he would come across this man. How did he know? Because the Bible said he knew what was in the front part of John. said Jesus Christ knew what was in the heart of man. Yeah. Because in other words, he didn't have to ask the man when he born yeah. blind. When he passed him, the whole man's whole lifetime yeah. just come to his attention, huh? Yeah. That he's born blind and he's out your begging and suffering all this time yeah, just for him to show up on scene. Because he knew that the man was born blind. Not only that, he knew that that man wanted to fire and follow him. Because later on in, in chapter 9, you'll find that this man picked up and became a disciple and followed these guys. But you can't follow him if you're blind. You gotta have eyes to be able to see him in order to follow him. Yeah. And he's able to follow him. And he's saw that that, that man would become one of his disciples. Mm -hmm. All that in the blink of an eye, Jesus picked up on. As the man, he saw a man which was born blind. And the disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? Yeah. Uh, that he was born blind. Uh -huh. See, the first thing we want to do, call the mind, we want to say something wrong with him. Must have, they must have did something in order to get that on him, huh? Talk to me, talk to me. Well, yes, his, these are his disciples, huh? Uh -huh. These are the ones that followed him and put their life on the line to follow him and ask him, Amen. Master, what did he do? Did his parents commit a sin or did he commit a sin? Oh, yeah. And sometimes whoever we do, we see people that in circumstances, we think that if something come on them, but sometimes God can put something on you. You ain't got behind. Just let him know, just let you know that he got power enough to take it off you. Uh huh. Sometimes God can just lay something on you, huh? When he, when he lifted off you, you know that couldn't have done it but God on my right, huh? And so we ask him, who, 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 who sinned here? And Jesus, in verse 3, said, Jesus answered, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, in John, he also told us that the work of God, when we were talking about working in the kingdom of God, the work in the kingdom of God is to believe on the one that God presented to us. That's all the work is. It ain't no heaven It ain't no running around. It ain't no labor. It's based on our faith and our belief. To believe in the one that God has sent to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the work that we have in the New Testament. We don't have to do all of that. All we have to do is believe on the one that God has sent to us. So Jesus answered and said, neither, neither, neither this man sinned nor his parents, mm -hmm. but that the works of God yes, should be made manifest. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to verse 4 and said, I must work the works of him mm -hmm. that sent me. Yes. Yes. In other words, yes. if they believe on me, yes. because I must deliver them. Mm -hmm. now, if they have faith in me, I must deliver them. From whatever situation they're in, I must show to them that I can remove that situation and bring them above that situation so they have no faith and they believe on me. She said, I, I, I must work the verse 4. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. Great God from that. We're living in that night now, huh? We're living in the time of night now. The falling off of church. Unbelievers. The ones that doubt in the work of God. The one that even questioned whether Jesus Christ was even real, a figment of somebody's imagination. Right. Why? Because, because now sometimes you, you can get a whole lot of, of, of fancy world and stuff and draw big crowds of people, but yeah. in the midst of them, there's only a few of them that truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ. Yeah. In the last days, God is separating that out in the, day, in the last days. Yeah. Because what happened when God from the oh, y'all know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Because God in these last days, He wanted He want the true believer. In Jesus Christ. He don't want no place up because there ain't no place, ain't nothing to play with no longer, huh? Amen. We're coming too close to the end here, huh? Amen. And God wanna know who is for my son and who is against my son. And we'll find out in chapter 9 here that there's a lot of people against Jesus Christ. Some of them wanted Jesus Christ, but many of them were against Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. Many of them love Jesus Christ, respect them. Some of them hated yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Ain't, that, ain't that how it is today? Yes, you gotta talk about it's Jesus. Oh, now, I don't want to talk no more about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear no more no stories. Yeah. That ain't no what this was for. Yeah. The white man did it, or the black man did it, or this man did it. And I don't want to hear none of that stuff about no Jesus. That tell you right to your face nowadays, huh? Before they just smile and go on about that business. But that tell you to, to, to your face now. They don't want none of this Jesus that we're teaching here, that we're preaching, huh? But, but in the last days, yes. it's Jesus in verse 5, he said, yes. as long as I am in the world, yes. I am the light of the world. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yes. so as long as I'm in the world, I'm, in, I'm the light of the world. <laughs> and as long as you and I believe, Okay. Uh -huh. As long as you and I accept Jesus Christ as the, as the Son of the Living God, the light is in the world, huh? Okay. This is the light that you say in us, huh? So no matter what you say about it, I'm going to believe him in him that he is the Son of the Living God. I'm going to believe that he was born on the earth. I'm going to believe that he died on the couch. I'm going to believe that he got up yeah. on Sunday morning. I'm going to believe that. I don't care whatever you say. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to believe. This is what Jesus said. This is the work that we believe on the one that God has sent to us. Then verse 6 said, He had, he had thus spoken. And then he spat on the ground. Oh, we're going to get dirty. Come on, you huh? Come on, you yeah. A lot of people blind but never got healed. You know, spit on the ground. Stared this thing in some mud out of the spit that he put on the ground, huh? He took that finger and put it on that man's eye. Right, huh? Yes, they anointed that other eye with it, huh? Yes, Some of us would say, no, no, that's it. I'll just, I'll just be satisfied right. to be blind, huh? I ain't going to be, I don't want none of that spit mud on my eye. Huh? Talk to me, somebody, huh? Yes, so the blind man said, well, I got to come from my mother, boy. I ain't never seen the sunshine or the green of the grass or the, or, or the flowers or the trees or the yes. beauty of the butterfly. Yes. I ain't seen nothing. Yes. All I seen was yes. black yes. doctors, huh? Because I was born blind. Yes. Right down, down. Yes. I ain't never seen nothing. They say, go ahead, put some of that mud on me. Great doctor, yes. Yes. Yeah, everybody else and nobody else help me. If I tell you, take some of that mud on me. Yes. Then he goes on there when he had thus spoken. Yes. He spit on the ground. Yes. And he made clay on the spiritual. Yes. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, huh? Yes. He spit on it, yes. met with some mud, <laughs> put it on his eye. Huh? Yes. And then he said this, and yes. said unto him, verse 7, mm -hmm. and said unto him, go, yes. wash in the pool of Salaam. Mm -hmm. Now, if that blind man had no baby, yes. he'd have died blind. Mm -hmm. Because now Jesus, the first of all, one thing we notice, that, that, that he didn't ask, the blind man didn't ask him for anything. Jesus just noticed him. <laughs> all the mother one other blind man on the road, Jericho, he, he all so loud that people had to tell him, shut up. Be quiet, <laughs> huh? Go talk to me, somebody, huh? And some of them would, would make so much noise, man, they had uh, villages were following him just to get healed. But the blind man didn't ask nobody for nothing. He was just there. <laughs> when Jesus passed by. How many, how many you know that it's good to be there when Jesus passed by your life? <laughs> Inside the walls there, there was a place called, was these pools. Now this pool of Salon was a, it's got a whole rich history in itself. Right. It was when, when, when the Israelites had to make pilgrimages to Jerusalem, they would come across dirty, dirty and dusty rooms and they, worlds and they would get dusty and they had a pool there. And that purpose of that pool was they go down and wash in that pool before they could come up into the temple to serve God. Right. It was, it was a, let me make it short. It serves as a baptism pool. Huh? Uh, yeah. They went down, and, as a matter of fact, if you go to any Jewish synagogue now, somewhere in that building, there's a pool 
where people can go and, and be dipped into water. But before they can come, it, it, sometimes they have to feel they can cleanse themselves as a cleansing thing, as a spiritual thing, and they get dipped in the water I before hear. they come up into I the hear. part of the synagogue. That's what that's what coming from the pool we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But Jesus told him to go down to the pool and wash himself. Mm -hmm. Now when you went down and back, I'm not going to cut this out, but back they tell you, son, that when you baptize in the name of the Father three times, the true tradition of the Jews was to baptize you, not say the name of the Father, Son, Holy, and put you in the water, but put you in the water in the name of the Father. Name of the Son, uh -huh. and the name of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Yeah. You get a threefold back. You get a threefold blessing from the baptism. Yeah. In the Jewish, what's the one they call a mitzvah? What they do there, they, they either dip three times uh -huh. or they dip seven times, yeah. and they have a place that's open for the members where they can go into the pool. Uh -huh. And this pool would serve the same purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand and four, they were walking the streets of Jerusalem. And um, saw a pipe had busted or something, and they had to get the back holes that was digging in the streets of Jerusalem. And they found this pool here yeah. that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they found it in 2004. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, this man down here 2,000 years before that time, that pool exists. In other words, this ain't no storytelling. Mm -hmm. When he said, go into the pool of Salaam, Salaam is in Jerusalem now. It's one of the mm -hmm. tourist points there mm -hmm. now. Huh? They found out Hezekiah built that pool in, in Second Kings 2020. Hezekiah built that pool from a spring mm -hmm. that was outside of the city walls of Jerusalem. And he had a spring that would come inside in case they were ever seized. They would have water on the inside yeah. of the old city, the old city of David. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That pool was there set as a purpose. And it was a big pool, like a limited pool. And the, and the pool was a set that you know, many people could get into. It wasn't no little, little pool like we got in the back. It was like big size, a big Olympic sized pool. Yeah. And people would come there and they would take their baptism and they wash themselves before they go up to the temple to serve God Almighty. Yes. So when he said it, I always went, how did this blind man get down to that pool? <laughs> when you look at it, you get all these steps in, there's a rugged steps and you go down to it. And they got pictures all on YouTube of this pool we're talking about. Yes. Yes. How did this blind man get down to that pool, huh? Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, he got around there, uh, uh, every other kind of way he got around. He, I guess he figured that he hit the thing. He said, well, I'm on that. Yes. Go, I, like, I got to put a little foot in there. Coming to it when I a real personal thing. When I was getting close to my retirement, last couple two or three, I was getting so tired. I mean, the struggle was just getting up in the morning, going to work. You understand? Once I got there, I could I, I could slide on through. But I got so tired of getting up and going through and getting up and going through. And every time I would get ready to throw a towel, I said, "This is it. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my papers in." And every time I get ready to uh, do that, I would meet this person. On the, on the metro line. Yeah. It was on the red line or the blue line, but we were crossing there. Uh -huh. And this person would come, and he would come down. He was blind uh -huh. in a wheelchair yeah. with a uh -huh. CNI dog uh -huh. on his way to work uh -huh. at 7.30 in the morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> and every time I run across this person, I, I would feel so guilty. What, a, what do I have that I'm complaining about? Huh? You know, if this man you know, he ain't got enough will in him to be blind and crippled, you know, in a wheelchair with a German shepherd pulling him and people telling him what train to get on, what train not to get on, yeah. and to get to work in the morning, how can I feel having a sympathy for myself? Huh? Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Huh? Yeah. How can you have sympathy for yourself? This blind man, he got down to the pool where Jesus told him to go some kind of way. I don't know how he did it, but he had the will to get there. The yeah. reason I know he got, he, he got that, because later on he said, when he, when he dipped in the water, verse 7, and said to him, go to wash in the pool. Uh -huh. And he went his way, uh -huh. and therefore washed, and came to see him. Mm -hmm. When he washed the mud off, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. when he washed off the dirt, huh? Yeah. He was blind, great right on time, huh? When he got there, but when he got some water and washed off the dirt off there, he yeah. could see it again, huh? Yeah. And he was blind, born blind, but now, because of the beating, that's a lesson for us. Yes. Sometimes we think we can just do anything, everything we want to do. That's how we are. Yes. That's how we are, all of us, huh? Yes. And, and then we want to call on the Lord. Oh. When we get all stuck up, Lord, help me, huh? Yes. Well, yes. Lord, if you're dealt with the Lord told you in the first place, and you didn't have to call the Lord to help you, huh? Yes. You wouldn't even be in that situation. How many situations that have I done myself out of, huh? Oh. Oh. You don't tell the Lord you can hold on. I'm going to go on and do my thing here, huh? Oh. And then you get an eyeball deep in the stuff you have to hey, Lord, Lord, help me. Like, oh, Peter, you don't have water, huh? Yes. Yes. But if, if he had not gone to that pool, he would have died blind. He would have never seen. Because it wasn't about the mud, it wasn't about the pool, huh? It was about being obedient to Jesus Christ's direction that he gave to him. Talk to him, somebody, huh? Somebody in the direction, huh? Big up, huh? 
the solution is all ready, but sometimes he gives us the right. Why? Because he knew in this man's heart that this man wanted to follow him, and he couldn't follow him if he didn't obey him. Good yes. y'all. Yes. 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 Oh yeah, huh? Yes. He knew the man from the beginning that he knew when he passed the man by. He said, this man, this, this, this brother here desired, desired to be my disciple and follow me all the way to Calvary and have eyes to see when I die on Calvary for his sin. Yes. Now, uh -huh. And he read all that in the man's spirit. Just passing by, running from somebody trying to stone him to death. What yeah. God, what a mighty God we say. Oh, yeah. God, God. He was running on past him, but they were looking for him. They wanted to kill him. They had, if you look at chapter 8, they had gather stones to kill him with. Uh -huh. Blind man, you got eyes, come back and see, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, now that, 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 that story just get interesting. Uh -huh. I'm going to try to wrap it up in five minutes because I don't keep you no longer. He come by, he see. Uh -huh. He born blind. Yes. Never in the history. And it recorded where somebody was born blind yeah, yeah. was given sight to see. Huh? Yeah. This was America. Everybody called it America. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so the people in the temple that was against Jesus, yeah. they called him in. Yeah. How did you get your sight? Yeah. I don't know how I got my sight. A fellow named Jesus yeah. passing by. Yeah. 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 I ain't asking for nothing. Huh? Yeah. He didn't stop me. Huh? Yeah. He took some mud and spilled and made some mud and rubbed my eyes told me to go down there and bathe. Huh? Yeah. In the pool down there. Huh? Yeah. And I did what he told me to do, and I went, and I was blind, huh? But now I can see, huh? Yeah, so they, then they went on and said, oh, you, you know this, you know, so the righteous people. Yeah. That's why I always tell you when you follow the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe in Jesus, this thing we follow is not religion. Uh -huh. It's a personal relationship with God Almighty through his son, Jesus Christ, huh? Uh -huh. Ain't nobody but Jesus and you. It's a personal relationship yeah. that we form between, between, we form with God Almighty through Jesus Christ, huh? Yeah. And so when we begin to understand that this man here, he had been blind, so now they're going to question him, yeah. the religious order. Yeah. The ones that have been trained for thousands of years to recognize and to greet the Son of God when he showed up. Yeah. They're the ones that wanted to stone him. Yeah. That's what religion does, huh? Yeah. Becomes too self-righteous to, to even see where God was at, huh? What is going on? That's why I call him Jesus and the blind men. The blind men were physically blind, but when Jesus opened his eyes and laid on him, Jesus told him who he was. He said, I want to follow you. I want to be your disciple. I'm going to follow you. Yes. The ones that was in the high priest and the ones that was in the temple, they had all this book learning. Yeah. They got they had all this knowledge. They had been trained for a thousand years yeah. to be able to find the Messiah when he showed up. Yeah. And guess what? They, they didn't bow to him. They got a stone to crush his head in the grave. Yeah. God, that's religion today, huh? Yeah. Religion has always been like that. So Jesus came and said, I'm going to do away with this stuff, huh? I'm going to form a personal relationship. If you want to believe on me, then I'm going to form a personal relationship with you. Yes. Yes. Ain't nobody in religion or no order. Nothing going to be between me and you. Yes. It's going to be me and you, huh? He's omnipresent, yes. huh? And he's omnipresent. He, he's able to do it with each and every one of us, huh? Great God, now he's big enough. Great God, now. That's why he told Nicodemus, say, I'm not the wind. Yeah. Nobody know where the wind comes from, no way it goes, just know it was the wind. His spirit is like the wind, it can cover all of us, like the atmosphere that we're living in today. His he is Jesus is like the atmosphere. He can touch each and every one of us. So the blind man went and told him, said, well, I was a man, I don't know. That I passed by that name, Jesus rubbed some mud on my eye, told me, go and watch. I did it. And I could see. Say, well, you know he a sinner. Why you believe he was Say, I don't know. I don't know whether he's a sinner. Oh, I don't know whether he's a saint. I don't know whether he's a messiah. And I don't know whether he is the devil. Huh? I don't know what it is. But this I do know, huh? That once I was blind, huh? Oh, God, I'm dying. But now I see. God, I'm dying, huh? I was blind, but, but now I see, huh? Oh, God, yeah. And I do know this, huh? And this is what's so important. I believe on him because he was able to open my eyes. The, the thing is, we don't have to have all this for new high education, all this stuff the world is standing from earth. When God touches you from high, great God, he can open your eyes up and he can show you simple things for you to believe yes, in. Yes, Big arms, uh huh? Yes, the man said, I don't know all the stuff y'all teaching down here, just tell me, huh? Yes, but all I do know is that I was blind. Yes, uh, and when I obeyed him, huh? Big arms, uh huh? And I went and did what he told me to do, huh? Yes, now I can see. Great. God comes down, yes, huh? And so he was able to anchor his faith in the works of Jesus Christ, yes, huh? Yes, and he was able to stand there, not only did he stand there, and then he got to argue, call the man's parents. Yes, and he make sure this was the one. Yes, yes it was. Was this. Was, was this boy here born blind? Uh -huh. Parents scared because they're part of the temple. Uh -huh. They're part of the church, right? Yeah. Parents told him that, uh, I don't know, I know he was born blind. Uh -huh. 
But how he got to see, I don't know. Ask him. Uh -huh. He's a man. He can answer for himself. That's what the parents told him. Because they were scared to tell him that Jesus had, had healed him. Huh? But the thing is, is that when he, when he, when after he gained that, as he gained it now, then he got up and followed Jesus. He became a disciple of Jesus, uh -huh. a follower of Jesus. Amen. Now his eyes open. He know that not only did Jesus open his physical eye, but Jesus opened his spiritual eye so that he could see Jesus as the Christ huh? uh -huh. of God Almighty. Uh -huh. And so in, the, in closing here, we, when we begin to look at the things of this blind man, uh -huh. it was important here. Uh -huh. Sometimes we don't need to know all this for little big uh, 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 words are all we need to know is what Jesus done for me. God from that, huh? God from that, huh? I know what He done for me. And sometimes all your faith has to do with rest on what Jesus done for you. God from that, not nobody else, just what He done for you, huh? Where He got you in, what He got you through, what He covered you in, how He fixed you, huh? How He looked after you, huh? When you were down, how He got you up, huh? All you need to know, I don't know all this other stuff, huh? But I do know that once I was down, but now I'm up, huh? I do know that once I was on my way to the pits of hell, but now I know I got a, a robe hanging in heaven for me. I don't know, great on that. All this other stuff, all this philosophy, all this stuff you're talking about, I don't know that stuff, but I do know one thing. Huh? Big up, once I was lost, huh? Yeah. But now I'm found, huh? Yeah. I do know one thing, huh? Once I was on my way to hell, but now God has given me a ticket. Great God was yeah. there. The heaven on high. Yeah. I do know one thing, huh? Yeah. God was there. I don't know much. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I don't have to know too much, huh? Because I'm gonna eat what John did, he gave us that just enough to believe on Jesus Christ. Yeah. And guess what? Preach. That's enough. Yeah. You don't need no more. Yeah. Because if you had the, all everything you wanted in this world. Yeah. Everything the world could offer you, yeah. and you didn't have Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. Yeah. you ain't got nothing. Yeah. It's because when you lay there, pull that last breath, heart tick the last time, they lay you out, ain't none of it gonna go down that hole with you. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah, huh? Somebody else will be fighting on it up here. Yeah. While well, all the rest of it is gone, huh? Yeah. You ain't got nothing. I don't care how much you got. You ain't got nothing, huh? But you don't have to have nothing great God like this blind man that was a bag. But if you got Jesus on your side, yeah. you get all you need. Huh? Great God from down. All you ever did need and all you ever will need you have it in Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. And so when yeah. we begin to move forward, and we need to, to, to touch on some things, but God will show us the way. Yeah. And like we said, we're going to work on the pool back there, uh -huh. based on faith, huh? Yeah. Somebody need to be saved, baby. Uh -huh. Somebody need to get into a baptism, yeah. baby. Somebody need to be dipped, baby, on that. Whether it's one time or three times, baby. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to be dipped. And we're not going to give up on doing the work that Jesus has called us to, because yeah. he has opened our eyes, both. He's given us both. Yeah. physical sight, but he's also given a spiritual sight. Uh, yeah. That the work of God it, is just beginning. Yes. And in these last days, if they ever did need Jesus, they sure will sure. need him now. Because the world is going, going to hell in a handbasket. And the only hope that the world has is this gospel <laughs> and, the, and the Lord and the Christ yeah. and the, of this gospel. Yeah. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. And we got a job. Yeah. Our job yeah. is to present Jesus Christ yeah. to a dying world. Yeah. And tell them there's still hope. Yeah. No matter what color, no matter what, where you're from, no matter your ethnic group, there is still hope yeah. in Jesus Christ. Yeah. He is the hope, the glory yeah. of God yeah. on earth. Lord God Almighty, we just ask you in Jesus' name, those that are on the internet, we just ask that God will, will open your eyes and see that if you don't have him, you surely do need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Oh, yes. You need to give him a chance. Yes. And we have an opportunity, opportunity here to help you along the way. On the website there, you know, the church is abcgic.org. Just go out on the website and fill out the form and let us know whether you want to come to this little house. Yes. We've got a pool in the back, the water is warm, yes. and, the, and, and, the, and the faces are friendly here. Come and join us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.